This is a first for me. I remember feeling like the world had closed in around me and that lump in my chest wouldn't go away. When that game is taken away, the identity of who you are without the game is zoomed in and it's amplified. Lean in. This is a high, high, high quality quickie. Scar TV. And we're back with another episode of B Scar TV. And I hope you all are having a beautiful day. I am having a beautiful day. I'm out here in the Big Apple, New York City, filming episodes of the B Scar TV podcast. I'm currently an NFL free agent. We're Smack dab in the month of October, and I'm not playing a lick of football. I've gone through my first off season as a professional of not being signed to an NFL team. I didn't play in a training camp and haven't played a, a, a lick of ball through the season. This is a first for me. In 22 years I've played this game of football, and every October, it's a Tuesday today. Every Tuesday in October, over 22 years, I've always been recovering from the past game and prepping for the next game. That is not my reality today. I wrote a blog post a year ago that I'm going to reference in this high quality quickie. And I, I wrote this blog post last year after I sustained an injury that sidelined me for a few weeks of the 2022 season. and. I was thinking a lot about my identity as a football player and as a human being and how injuries and time away from the game that you spend so much time, pour so much passion and energy and dedication into, when that game is taken away, the identity of who you are without the game is zoomed in and it's amplified. And you know these sentiments are especially relevant now, given my status as a free agent. Before we get started, i just take a moment to reintroduce myself. For those of you who maybe are new to the Beast Guard TV podcast or don't have a full understanding of who I am, my name is Brennan Scarlett. I was born and raised in Portland, Oregon. Went to Central Catholic High School, left Portland, went to the Bay, went to Berkeley for four years, studied at the Haas School of Business, graduated from Berkeley, did a graduate transfer to Stanford University, where I played one season and got my master's in management science and engineering. And I won a Rose Bowl. In 2016, I was an undrafted free agent to the Houston Texans, where I spent five seasons, and then went on to play for the Miami Dolphins for the 2021-22 seasons. During my professional career, I have done a lot off the field. My first venture off the field was building my nonprofit called the Big Yard Foundation that supports community empowerment back in Portland, Oregon, empowering historically marginalized and disadvantaged communities through the pillars of literacy, creativity, and physical wellness. I've also started a creative agency that focuses on amplifying not just my voice, but the voice of athletes and amplifying the stories off the field and leaning into the journeys of who we are as athletes in the context of brands and storytelling, video production, social media, etc. And through those experiences, I've also dug into investing, I've invested in real estate, stocks, venture capital, private equity. I'm a curious person and I explore those curiosities. And this is not the first sabbatical that I've been forced to take away from the game of football. Over my 22 years of playing this game, I've had several injuries that I've sustained and the game has been taken from me. And unfortunately, the nature of the game is such that they happen often. What's been an interesting experience over the past, call it 17 years of playing from high school through my professional career is how I've begun to respond to the time away from the game. This last season, when I had gotten hurt, I was fine, relatively fine. After I went through the 24 hour rule, soaking in self pity, feeling sorry for myself. But when I arose from that, I was energized. I was still stimulated, I'm, I'm still motivated. And I would say in this context now, 
being a free agent. I would say that's that reflects how I'm currently feeling. I'm passionate. I'm driven. And I want to go get it just like I wanted to go get it on the field. But when I sustained my first season ending injury as a sophomore in high school, I remember feeling like the world had closed in around me and that lump in my chest it wouldn't go away. And the things that I, I love the most in my life, competition and sport, have been taken from me for the first time in my life. It's not only the thing that I loved most, or I felt like I loved most, but it was also the thing that I perceived that others love the most about me. And subconsciously, if not even consciously, I felt that people wouldn't love me as much if I wasn't able to perform on the football field or on the basketball court or on the track. And yes, I was on the track. 11-7, 100 meter dash at 245 pounds. Look on athletic.net. I don't think those feelings are exclusive to me or even exclusive to athletes. I think that it seems natural that us as humans, we unconsciously soak up the praises and the love that we receive for consistently performing a task well in a manner that begins to slowly bleed into one's measurement cup of self-worth. But what is exclusive to athletes is that the task that we perform only can be done consistently at a high level for a very finite and short amount of time relative to the rest of our lives. In high school, being a great athlete boosted the hell out of my ego. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Young B. Scar loved the approval that he was receiving from my classmates, teachers, coaches. It affirmed my confidence. I was a confident kid, but whenever somebody told me I had a good game or was balling, uh, it boosted that confidence even more. And it also helped fuel my drive. And I wanted more, I wanted to be better. And on that Friday night as a sophomore in 2008, I was not prepared for the aftershock. I felt like I wasn't worth as much. I felt like my life didn't have as much value. And I felt like people would no longer give me praise. I felt as if I had lost everything that I had. And in retrospect, I realized that my suffering went deeper than a knee injury. What I suffered from was a fragile identity, one that was largely tied to my ability to be on the football field. Luckily, I had a support group both at home and at school who lifted me up and helped me through those times. My old AAU basketball coach, Coach Jeff, my dog, told me something that stuck with me forever. He said, football doesn't define you. Coach Jeff's from Akron, Ohio. You know, it has that accent. You know, football, football don't define you, B. And he's told me that over and over, over my career. And I've always thought that those words were so eloquently put. Upon considering the act of something being defined, you think about that thing being given meaning. And what I believe plagues many of us as athletes is that due to our love and passion for the game, which makes us the elite athletes that we are, we then allow the game to define our self-meaning. By no means am I here to generalize the athlete population and say that because I have struggled with this issue, so has everyone else. Everyone has a unique set of emotions that they experience and deal with in their own unique ways. However, for me and for many of my peers whom I've seen get injured or otherwise transitioned out of the game at any level, this crisis of identity is a relevant one. I am here to say that my journey to form a more whole identity that began with the wise words of good old Coach Jeff has been a rewarding one and one that I feel is worthwhile to share. In my early days, I filled this void that was created from losing the game. I filled this void with competition in the classroom. I competed my ass off to be the smartest, to do the best, to get the best grade in school. And it helped in those moments, but it wasn't the final solution because <laughs> as I found out once I became a professional, you're not in school forever. And so upon transitioning from my Stanford Management Science and Engineering program, then to the league, and then having an injury and being placed on injury reserve my rookie year, I ran into the same issue. No ball, no school. So who is Brennan? Fortunately, the whole school thing worked out as a, as a springboard into the ensuing part of the journey. 
I was able to take some of the skills that I learned from my business courses, my engineering degree, and I was able to apply some of those skills to investing in stocks, investing in real estate, community involvement. And all of that was, again, all of that was great, but it was only part of the solution. The true answers that I was subconsciously seeking began to unfold upon my quest to tell the story of Brennan Scarlett, the human being. My initial thought process was this. If I can connect an audience with Brennan Scarlett, the human being, instead of just Brennan Scarlett, number 57 on the football field, when this game inevitably comes to an end and it's taken from me once and for all, the people will still listen. They'll still be connected and they'll still love me. A lot of this thought process was the birth and the genesis of B-Scar TV and sharing who I am off the field and providing a platform and a microphone for not just myself, but also for other athletes. And while this did have its merits, the thought process was actually incomplete because it was rooted in extrinsic motivation. This thought process meant that I was still heavily relying on the outcomes of my actions and others' perception of who I am for my own self-realization, in a word, unhealthy. As I dug deeper into exploring different platforms and mediums to share my interests, I found that the action of telling my story and sharing my personality was actually a very rewarding one. Sure, the outcome, it would have been great if it was more followers or a lasting audience, but the process of exploring who I was off the field my interests, my thoughts, my opinions, my worldview, and then sharing it aloud was actually the most important piece. Not because it presented a different image of myself to others, but it, because it informed a greater image that I have of myself. What has come with the exploration of these different interests is a simultaneous exploration of the communities that share these interests. And as I have begun to immerse myself into these different communities outside, of the game of football, I've been fascinated to find that in many cases, they could care less that I'm a football player. The value that my presence brings is not bound to my performance to last week's game. My presence in these communities, my value in these communities is not bound to even being on a roster the 2023 season. Although in many cases, I have leveraged the NFL shield in my NFL platform to initiate the conversations and gain access. But at the end of the day, I found that largely my contribution to these com communities is that I'm appreciated as Brennan Scarlett, the community member that also plays football. I found these relationships to be much different than the relationship with the guy in my Instagram community who called me a shitbag because I missed a tackle and messed up his fantasy football league. Through my journey, I found <clears throat> there are people out there who love me because I like indoor plants. They could actually care less that I tackle dudes for a living. They're actually just curious how I got my corn plant to bloom. I've actually had a corn plant bloom twice, and they emit the most beautiful odor in the evenings as they bloom. And then every time they bloom, they, each little bloom dies off, and they close up in the daytime, and then they open back up in the nighttime. It's a crazy thing. Look into it. I found that there are people who share my passion for helping inspire kids to learn how to read. And then I found that people actually create companies to help accomplish these goals. And I found that they were genuinely interested in my thoughts and opinions that were informed by my unique life experiences. I found that there are people who respect or can relate to me because I'm familiar with the Portland real estate market. I found that they have a whole community dedicated to real estate opportunities and they were happy to have me join in on their Zoom meetings and listen in. Community has been an important piece in reshaping my identity into a healthier one. A community that has grown from my willingness and intentionality to publicly share my story and share who I am off the field. Based on interests and hobbies, I've been able to align myself with people, brands, and companies that vibe with my values. And along my journey, I've been inspired by mentors, and other guys around the NFL who have found value in their own storytelling. The likes of guys like Ndamukong Sue with real estate, Brandon Copeland with financial literacy, Kelvin Beecham with investing. And one of the coolest things about these guys is that I may be only existing one, or in some cases two, of these guys 
communities. And it's likely that they have several more communities outside the ones that we share and outside the game of football. And I met these dudes <laughs> through our communities outside of the game that just intersected based on interests off the field. Football wasn't the core reason for us to be introduced in the first place. I'll fast forward to today, 2023. I'm dealing with free agency and my time away from the game much better than sophomore B-Scar dealt with the knee. Same toilet. I'm spending my time doing a lot of things outside of the thing that I've poured a lot of my heart and soul into over the last 22 years, but different shit. My self-worth operates relatively independent of the game. I have other communities in which I am immersed and that value me the same, whether I'm setting an edge on first and 10 or not. Brennan Scarlett is still loved for everything he is outside of the arena. And more importantly, I love Brennan Scarlett for who he is and everything that he does. Football doesn't even begin to define me. My personal anecdote to this healing of a fragmented identity is maybe most directly correlated or relevant to my fellow footballers due to the high in injury rates and the transience of our careers. But I believe that this letter can potentially serve as one of encouragement to all athletes, regardless of age, competition level, or sport. Yes, give everything to your craft. That's how you're going to keep being great. But understand that your journey through the process of becoming great is what makes you who you are. Your values, your principles, discipline, commitment, these are the things that define you. The outcome of the competition is less important. Take time to apply these intangibles to other areas of your life. When your time permits, respect yourself enough to figure out who you are. Explore. And as you do this, don't be afraid to share what you find with others. You'll be surprised how many people actually share your interests. Seek out groups that share those interests. Connect with companies that have created viable business models off of those interests. And in each of these communities, look for ways to add value, just as you've added value to your team by playing your position at a high level. Lean in. In the emerging world of digital spaces, economies, communities, finding individuals around the world who share in your interests has never been more accessible. This intentionality of sharing these interests and immersing yourself in their respective communities could bring you a safe zone outside the fickleness of sport. It could help you build a valuable personal brand in a way that's true to your story and identity. And it might even begin to create wealth building or monetization opportunities. Or maybe you're just left with a fuller understanding of you journey well. This episode of Be Scar TV has been brought to you by Scarlet Creative. For the full-length video episode and more content, find us on Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok at Be Scar TV. And please, leave us a review. Drop a comment. What do you want to see? What do you want to hear? Who do you want to hear from? We would love to hear from you. This is your host, with the most, Brennan Scarlett, signing off. Peace. Peace.